All right. So now that we've mastered lexing or breaking up into words, HTML, let's turn our attention to JavaScript, the other language we'll be considering in this class. And I'm going to introduce you to JavaScript by jumping right into an example by way of a parable. Over here on the left, we see some web page code, apparently a web page owned by Stephen. Welcome to Stephen's web page. And Stephen would really like to compute five factorial, five times four times three times two times one. Over here on the left, we see the HTML source code. And on the right, we see the result as it would render. This P tag I haven't introduced you to yet, but it means begin a new paragraph. We'll write out the words welcome to, we'll show Stephen in bold. You've got this five factorial, this bang, the, uh, the exclamation mark, often means factorial in mathematics, printed in italics so you can see it slanted. But unfortunately, Stephen is super sad. He can't remember the value of five factorial. Well, this is exactly the sort of thing that a programming language like JavaScript could help us out with. It can carry out computations just like Python, so we can do work in the middle of a web page. Let's write our first JavaScript script together. Here, this line starting with script, type equals text JavaScript, and then this document write line, and then ending here with this closing script tag. All of this, these three lines together, are a JavaScript program embedded inside an HTML web page. JavaScript programs always begin with this special script tag, and this tag has an argument because there might be multiple types of tags out there in the universe. We've seen tag arguments before with the anchor tag. Here I have an anchor tag where the argument is a hypertext reference. Here I have a script where we're telling the web browser, you should treat this as a JavaScript program. So this JavaScript program is very simple. It's the equivalent of print hello world in Python. JavaScript's name for the print function is document.write, which we'll sometimes just abbreviate as write. But the semantics, the meaning, are largely the same. It's also worth noting that we've put parentheses around the argument to document.write, almost as if it were a mathematical function. We can do that in Python. It's allowed, but often we don't. And we've ended the line with a semicolon, whereas at the end of a Python line, we often don't have a semicolon. But again, you can put semicolons at the end of Python lines. We just typically don't. So now we're going to try to use the full phenomenal cosmic power of JavaScript to compute five factorial. To do so, I'm going to make a recursive function called, surprise, surprise, factorial. It's going to compute the value. So let's walk through every part of this JavaScript code together. The word function means I'm declaring a function. This is very similar to def in Python. Then I give the name of the function, and then I write the arguments, just like I would in Python. In Python, I'd have a colon here, but JavaScript requires slightly different punctuation, this opening curly brace. And in this regard, it's more like languages such as C or C++ or Java or C Sharp, curly brace languages. Our factorial function is going to be recursive, and every recursive function needs a base case, a time when it stops. Our stopping condition is when n is 0. We could have picked n is less than or equal to 0, n is less than or equal to 1. So I have an if statement that's checking that. Again, in Python, this would probably look very, very similar, except that we'd use a colon instead of an opening curly brace. If n is 0, we return 1, and I have a semicolon at the end of all my statements. Then, in Python, I would know that I'm done with the if statement because of the tabbing. JavaScript doesn't use that sort of readable tabbing rule to figure out the control flow when an if statement ends. So instead, you have to explicitly close off this opening curly brace, just like you'd have to close off a tag in HTML or close off parentheses once you start them. We're going to study this a lot more as time goes by. So I close off the then branch of my if. I have a semicolon, and now I have a new return statement. And this is basically just the formula for factorial. It's n times the factorial of n minus 1. So this part here is a function call, in fact, a recursive function call, just like you'd expect to see in Python. I'm ending the whole thing with a semicolon. This is the end of my function definition. And at the end of the day, I print out, and the JavaScript version of print is document.write, factorial of 5. And over here on the right, you can actually see it. 
we've got the 120, which is the correct value for factorial. Uh, so what that tells me is that if prettiness matters, I should delete those question marks because now we are super happy because we can compute 5 factorial using embedded JavaScript in the middle of a web page. Or to put it another way, a way that's a bit more puntastic, it's a good thing JavaScript can run on the page of Steven. And basically my voice is telling me not to quit my day job. <laughs>